Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm showing you everything's been added, changed and fixed in Minecraft Snapshot 23W14A. So if you like Minecraft videos like this one, then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft 1.20 news in the future. And so in today's snapshot, there are quite a few changes to the Scott blocks. There is actually a new logo for Minecraft Java Edition. And they've also added the new panorama for Minecraft 1.20, along with a couple of other new features. So let's get into all of this. So this video is a live stream at the same time as well, which is why there's no editing here. Uh, but that does mean you will get this video out as soon as possible. So let's just get started with the changes to the different Skulk blocks. And so there have been changes to the Skulk Shrieker, the Skulk Sensor, and the Calibrated Skulk Sensor. So let's just grab those three. Of course, the Skulk Shrieker and the Skulk Sensor have been in the game for quite a long time. And the, Skulk, and the Calibrated Skulk Sensor is a new feature for 1.20. They've also made some changes to that. But let's start with the Skulk Shrieker. So the Shrieker, of course, will shriek. If you stand on it. There we go. But the change now is that if you waterlog it, just like this, and then stand on top of it, you'll see that it's now silent. It will still play the animation of its shrieking, but it will not make any noise. And this block has also been added to the redstone blocks tab. So there it is right there. Then as for the skulk sensor, this is for both the skulk sensor and the calibrated skulk sensor. The default redstone output has been modified to be more reliable for distance calculations. All right. Not entirely sure what that means, but we can take an output here from the calibrated skulk sensor. So we can see what's going on. I don't see any immediate changes here. That's just walking. The walking sound gives off a single redstone signal strength. And it also strongly powers the blocks they are placed on. Which means, I believe, that yeah, this will now give off a redstone signal to this block below it. Which means this redstone dust activates if you activate the skulk sensor. Which was a well requested feature. For the skulk sensor, and this also works for the calibrated skulk sensor, as you can see. Works for both. Alright. Then, uh, specifically for the calibrated skulk sensor, it has a cooldown of just a single second now. So, as you can see, if we place some redstone behind it, it actually cools down after just a single second. So, we can receive a new sound every single second, as opposed to every two seconds, which is what the regular skulk sensor does, I believe. So you can see that this calibrated skulk sensor can take in more signals than the regular skulk sensor. And so the calibrated skulk sensor now can also detect vibrations from further away. So we're quite far away here. And if we step on the ground, you can see that the calibrated skulk sensor can still detect us while the regular skulk sensor cannot. And that's because its range has been upgraded from 8 blocks to 16 blocks. And so it makes it just a better... Well, better block than the regular Skulk sensor. And so the calibrated Skulk sensor now also accepts signals into the calibration input site more consistently with other redstone components. For example, signals can now be received through a block. So I would assume it's something like this. You can power the input part of the calibrated Skulk sensor through a block like this. If we just add a lever to it. There we go. Now it will no longer give any output if I walk, because that is not the right signal strength for this calibrated skulk sensor. Once again, a well-requested feature for this new block. Alright, then next, um, replaceable blocks no longer block the connection between antonic tables and bookshelves. Alright, so there's probably just something to do with uh, antonic tables and bookshelves, so let's grab those. Bookshelves. So as you know, if you place an enchanting table and some bookshelves next to it, they will upgrade the enchanting table and there will be some beautiful particles to going between them as well. Which we'll hopefully see. These pink petals are quite annoying. But here we can see that those particles going from the bookshelves over to the enchanting table. But if you place any blocks in between, you can block the bookshelves just like this. And apparently this no longer happens if you put replaceable blocks between the... Bookshelves and the enchanted and the enchanting table. Not 100% sure what they mean with replaceable blocks, but let's move on, I suppose. 
to the desert temple. So let's locate structure desert temple because there's a change to the secret room inside of the desert pyramid they've added for the archaeology part of this 1.20 update. So in the desert temple, the new room with the, with the suspicious sand in it um, has more of its roof collapsed and one block of suspicious sand is always visible in the top layer. So let's just head into this suspicious, well, suspicious sand, into this desert temple. And so we should see this part, which is the part where you can find the secret room. And apparently there should be always a block of suspicious sand visible on the top layer. So let's give ourselves some night vision to see this better. Some night vision. Uh, well, just infinite. That's also a new feature in this new 1.20 update, of course. And zero true. There we go. So apparently you should be able to see some suspicious sand, at least one suspicious sand on the top layer here. However, I don't actually see it. No, definitely don't see it here. But they do say that apparently it should be there. And so the, the roof of this structure is now also apparently more caved in. Oh, well, I just broke some suspicious sand. That's always a bummer. Ah, look at this. Yeah, so this is definitely more caved in than before. There is way less sandstone on top of the secret room. So previously there was way more sandstone, something like this. But now most of it is actually sand. And usually one of the top blocks is now also a piece of suspicious sand, so it's more visible. That's one of the changes they made there. Then next, uh, this desert temple is just completely blocked in. So for the next change, we'll actually go back into the main menu which is right here, of course. There's two, two changes here. So first of all, they've added the new panorama behind here, which as you can see is a beautiful cherry grove biome, which was to be suspected because it's the only new biome added in 1.20, but it looks beautiful, looks majestic. You can even see the new cherry blossom particles falling down over here as well. And there's a beautiful sunset there. So this is the new panorama. And the second change you might already be noticing is a new logo. Yeah, so this is the new logo for Minecraft Java Edition. It is less pixelated and looks more like the Better Condition logo now. And it also says Java Edition right below. So that is what it looks like right here. I personally don't like that the splash text overlaps with the Java Edition text on the bottom there. I'm hoping they can change it in some way because it doesn't look that great. But this is the new Java Edition logo anyway. Ah, and I believe that's also a sniffer down there. That might be a sniffer there, or it's just the, the log of the tree, one of the two. It's probably just log of the tree. No, the panorama is just a beautiful cherry grove biome. Uh, for the Tails and Trails update, or the, yeah, the Trails and Tails update, that's what 1.20 is called. No one remembers, but that is it. All right, now let's get back into the game because there are some more technical changes which we should go over. So. If you have a sign with a click event, so that means if you can click on the sign it opens a website or whatever, that now also works if the sign has not been waxed with some honeycomb. Um, they've also added a new loot table function called reference, but I think what's the most interesting technical change is they've added support for quick play. So I can't really show this off right here in this video because it's quite technical, but what it means is that they've now added support for adding um, uh, a a button to your desktop, for example, where instead of launching the launcher or launching Minecraft itself, you can now launch straight into a world. And if I figure out how this works, I'll make a tutorial on it later on, uh, later this week, or maybe in the future once I figure it out. But you should be able to uh, make it so you can launch directly into a world. And so this is the quick play feature, and you can go into a single player world, a multiplayer world, or a realms world. You can... Uh, so specify the name of the world, the game mode you're in, and the time you joined the world, apparently. So that is the quick play feature they have added. We'll go into that later if I can figure it out in a future video. Then they've also updated the resource pack uh, version that is now 14. They've apparently updated the sprite uh, layout of Minecraft.png. And I believe that's most of the technical changes. Then there's also quite a lot of uh, bug fixes in this snapshot. The oldest of which is MC2474, 
which is transparent blocks, transparent blocks between bookshelves and sharing tables negate bonuses received from bookshelves. Ah, so that's what I mean by replaceable blocks. It's just transparent blocks. So if you place glass between bookshelves and sharing tables, it would previously actually block the bookshelves, but that should no longer happen. Then levers on top of item frames, Z fighting with blocks in the item frames should no longer happen. So if you have, for example, an item frame with, a, well, well, for example, I don't know, an anvil in it. So something that looks like this and then place a lever on top of the block, it will no longer Z fight with it. Of course, it makes more sense if you do it, for example, a bookshelf because that sticks out a little bit more. Place it on top and there we go. This is what it looks like now. So this is actually quite useful. It looks quite nice, I think, actually. And there will be no longer be any Z fighting in this texture, which is always good. And I've removed some more Z fighting in, for example, the glow squid and the squid uh, in horse armor um, and in a lot more features as well. There's also some bug fixes related to uh, a lot of different textures. But if you want to read through all the bug fixes, I'll leave a link with the patch notes down in the description down below. So you can read those for yourself. As I said, there's quite a lot to do with uh, textures. There's also quite a few bug fixes related to the sniffers. So hopefully those will be better now as well. But anyway, there we go. That's pretty much everything has been added since and fixed in the Minecraft Snapshot 23W14A. Main features are the new logo, the new panorama, and the changes to the Skulk sensor, Skulk Shrieker, and calibrated Skulk sensor. If you like this video, then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft 120 videos in the future. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in the next ones. Until then, bye bye.